Hey guys, Nigel here with you. Welcome back to the channel, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'm just going to do a very quick kit review for you today of this beautiful Kitty Hawk 135th MH60S Nighthawk. You'll have seen in my last couple of videos I've done, I did an announcement about um, Kitty Hawk going bust and, well not going bust but ceasing to trade and um, so therefore I've gone out and bought a couple of their kits and I think I'll buy another couple because their instructions are <laughs> difficult to deal with quite often and but their pla I love their plastic, their plastic is really really nice and I love their detail. They do make some silly mistakes which I'll point out in here and I will refer a couple of times to Phil Flory's beautiful build of the I think he did the SH60F I think he did. Um, if you are a member on Flory's channel go and have a look if you're not join for a month and go and watch because it is absolutely it's a beautiful build and he's actually said in the comments afterwards it's one of his all-time favorite builds and it, it, it's he's really done it nice it, it, it is beautiful um <clears throat> so th this kit is basically now obviously out of production so if you want one go and get one there's plenty of them available on ebay mainly from china e models have a few still in stock and i'm sure there's going to be other model shops around the country that still have them um, there is a massive range. They do like the SH60, the, the MH60, the UH60, all of them. You can just pick your best. And really, the main difference in them, if you if you have a look, is the tail wheel, the folding tail. Um, the Seahawk and everything has a longer section of tail folding, and they have a short, stubby uh, rear undercarriage leg, so they can fold the tail further back. Um, they also have a different rotor head. Now they all fold. Um, but the the folding head, the rotor head on the Seahawks is much more complex than the MH60, the, the, the army based versions, the UH60 and everything. So basically this is a UH60 or an MH60 with a Seahawk and SH60 rotor. Okay, so this rotor head, you'll see in the kit, we've got both. You could probably almost build two bloody helicopters out of what's in this box. It's amazing. So looking around the box, <clears throat> here on the side, We've got the uh, the same uh, vision as on the front, and then this is um, Shane Mader, my screaming in, my screaming Indian's bird, and this is the lady who does all the painting. Absolutely beautiful. Um, and then we've got on the end of the box, you can see it's KH five zero zero one five, okay. And then here we've got four uh, four options. More on that later. And then we've got our health and safety bit and everything here. So that's the kit as we look at it. And it is a very, very deep box. And as you will see, it is very, very full. Absolutely crammed to the top. I couldn't get another sprue in there. And this is one of those, I think, when you take it all out, I don't think it's going to go back in. So part of the reason for doing this is I want to have a look at it. Um, I'm going to get it all out. And then I've got a film recording of the order it came out in. So we can go back in. Now, I'm not going to open any of the bags because I may not build this for quite a while. Um, so... Bear with me on that. And there's, there's lots and lots of reviews of these helicopters. And as I say, there are lots and lots of different variants that share many, many of the same parts. So I'm going to get this out of the way, get the lighting better because um, you don't have the reflection of the box. And then we'll have a quick look through the instructions. All right. So excuse the glare on here. It's because this is slightly shiny. But if I have the light way over there so you don't get the glare, it becomes very dark. I need to get better lighting, basically. So this is basically the instruction manual, typical Kitty Hawk type book affair. Um, so we'll have a look through here. Um, image on the front obviously the same as image on the box and then we can go in here we've got all the sprue call outs and as you can see we've got two of those two of those two of those um, and then we've got there's lots and lots of parts in this kit and there are lots and lots of parts you're not going to use now they don't you do the usual sort of Tamiya thing where they'd have any parts not used or blackout areas you're not going to use um, so basically you just have to be really, really careful with your build. What I would generally do if they have got blacked out areas, I would basically nip them off the sprue so you don't make the mistake. Like, for example, straight away you can see here you've got a floor and then there's another floor. So we've got two main floors in here. Um, we've got four rotor blades there. And we've got another four rotor blades there. And there's going to be two different rotor heads. Um, we've got rotor heads over there and then we've got rotor heads down here. So... Lots and lots of uh, parts for your spares bin. And as I say, you could almost probably build another bloody helicopter. Or you could indeed use some of these parts to super detail your academy kit. There's an idea. So, um, starting off with the build. As I say, if you haven't seen a build of this and you want to see a really nice build, go look at Phil Flory's. It is beautiful. Um, 
and he also picks up on a lot of the pitfalls with the kit as well. It's very, very handy. Some really, really handy tips in there. Um, and you'll also see there's some differences. Like I know that on this one, on his model, you've got these parts here going into the floor, which support the, the rotary winch. Um, and there are you've got these tabs on here that go into recesses in the floor. On his kit, there were no recesses in the floor. On this one, there are. Work that one out. Um, so and there's also another big issue which you could come to as well. So basically, yeah, we're assembling the, assembling the center console. They're telling you to paint it flat black. We do get decals for it, um, and then we're going to put the floor panel in the, the the lifting winch. We've got these little sections of floor going in the front here. All of this on a helicopter is very important because obviously you're going to see it all through the glazing in the nose. Assembling the seats. Apparently the cushions are a little too wide. Uh, you get photo etch uh, belts, which is a nice touch, and we've also got some nice rudder pedals. Got the back part of the instrument panel here. Uh, another thing that Phil picked up of is these lights. They tell you in the instructions in his kit to fit the light to the instrument panel and then put the combing on. Well, the trouble is the lights stick out too far. So in here, they've got you fitting them to the in inside of the instrument panel. It looks like, almost like Kitty Hawk watched Phil's build, okay? And they pretty much corrected everything that was that he pointed out. So if the plastic reflects what the instructions are telling us, then we're, gonna, we're, we're in luck. And then we've got the forward area here. This is going to be in front of the... Um, Front the instrument panel and everything, and then going over here, we've got some seats being made up for the uh, for the cabin area, and then we've got the roof here with um, some sort of framework there. There's some little handles and greeblies going on here, little bits and pieces and levers for the uh, cockpit area, and then we're going to add the seats and this rear bulkhead. Now, something I noticed when I had a quick browse through here, all of a sudden this bulkhead's appeared. You can see there is no mention of any bulkheads in here at all. And then we go over the page, we've got four seats fitted to a bulkhead. Now here we've got the seats being assembled here for this frame. So it's not telling us to make two of these or two of these. In fact, they're the same. So I don't quite know what's going on there. They're the, they're the same parts. It looks like they might have the lower seat frames in a different position. So there's two of those. Well, that... This, this is the problem with Kitty Hawk. You've got one of these seats here, which is that one there. And then you've got that one there, which is that one there. And then this one here is basically the same, but with these legs E27 reversed. So this one's got the legs coming off the back of the seat. This one's coming off the side of the seat. And then this one will be coming off the other side of the seat. Okay, so there you are. And then all of a sudden, this bulkhead appears with four of those seats with those legs pointing backwards. So, yeah. <laughs> just assume it's all going to be the same if we've even got the parts in the kit at all uh, it looks like we don't have any belts for those seats so they would have belts so we need to be looking at that get some Edward belts or making them out of tape or something and we've got the side panels going in here or the side panels being assembled a fire extinguisher and a few bits and pieces on there and they're going in all beautifully detailed and then we're going to put it all into the fuselage and, and close it all up together now Take care with all this, make sure you dry fit everything. You do not want to have a problem with this centre seam. You've got a lot of parts here going in. It's all going to have been painted. You're going to be painting the inside of your of your fuselage. And if it's anything like a wing nut wings kit, as you know, you're going to have problems getting it together. And you really want this seam to be nice, particularly on the bottom. As I'll show you when we look at the parts, there's a lot of detail down there. So it's telling us here now to fit the the, um, the windscreen, which I don't know if you want to do. And you've got some clear parts going in here. And then you've got the clear panel going in there. Assembling the doors with the um, the glazing in there. And then you've got the, the rear view mirror. You wouldn't put them on now. They're going to get broken off. You probably wouldn't even fit the doors now. Um, so there we go. That's that. And if you did watch my build of that little mini four-wheel drive car worth noticing you get these stickers and that just think how wonderful that would be cut that out stick that in there and you'll have a lovely looking mirror so uh cool side door there with the glazing going in just a nice touch and then we've got the undercarriage going together here tires are in two halves not flat spotted i have seen you can get resin wheels and tires should you want to but there's no reason why these can't be made to look good um, and then we've got some bits and pieces going together here. Now, I don't know the terminology, so I'm sorry if I don't know the terminology of all the bits and pieces, but bear with me. Undercarriage legs going in here. Um, and then we've got this clear panel going in here on the, on the corners. And then the nose piece going on there. You might want to leave that loose so you can display the what's in behind there. Assembling the engines. Again, if you go and look at Phil's build, he did a lot of extra detail on the engines. I haven't watched that part of the build yet, but it does look stunning. Um, fitting the engines in. 
Um, there was another issue with Phil's build was he had this added onto the engines. This panel here was added onto the engines before we fitted the gearboxes, these gearboxes here. So basically the turbine drives a shaft through this gearbox, which in turn drives the rotor head, okay, through these angled gearboxes. Now obviously in his instructions it told you to glue this on first, and then you've got to try and get that through there, and it, there's no way it was going through there. So um, that was basically one thing that I did notice with this was different. So as I said, it looks like they've, they've watched his build and then changed it. So you've got some tubing going in here, you've got the main rotor head going on, these gearboxes, and then you've got the engine covers there going on, which you may wish to have open or closed. Um, if you've done a lot of work on your engine, then surely you would have them open, or at least one of your engines. Um, and then we've got this this uh, big pylon here going up. This is going to carry the big machine gun. And then we've got the fairing going over the front of the nose cover there. And you, one of your, the, the, the version, the Indian one, you're going to get the beautiful um, decals to go on there. And you've got these pylons here for mounting stuff off. Engine intakes, got them here. Okay, and then we've got some antenna and bits and pieces going on there. Now, this is where it gets a bit funny. If you remember, I showed you on the side of the box, there are four options. And you get decals for four options. But you only get the colour callouts and decal placement chart for two. <laughs> so, you need to use the box side and some uh, reference material if you want to do either the... Where's the box? You've got you've got uh, this one here and this one here. Okay, so you've got the Screaming Indians, which is this one here, and you've got the Blackjacks, which is this one here. Okay, with the dolphin on the back, it looks like that dolphin. I'm not sure what that is, but um, that one there. And then if you want to do this one here or this one here, which has got the bulldog on the back, which looks quite cool. Um, you don't have any uh, instructions for that, so you have to just follow the box art or look at your reference material. But again, as I said, Kitty Hawk do this. They put their colour callouts in the middle of the instruction manuals. You need to be very, very careful. They are designed to be pulled out because if this was folded over, like I could show on another manual, you would see that the actual, what you see on the right is not the same as the left. So they would have a join down here and this would be the back half of that helicopter and this would be the front half of this helicopter. Okay. So be careful with that. In this manual, you can't really rip it out because on the back, you've got part of your instructions. In fact, there we go. How's that for a mess up? That there is that there and that there is that there. So you can actually take it out. Um, and what they should have done here was had the two other variants on there and not the continuation of the instructions. Well done, Kitty Hawk. Right. Now, we've got these um, intake guards here. Now, I did notice on helis.com, or one of, the, um, one of the websites I was looking at, they talked about these intakes, these um, FOD guards. Um, they've never seen an MH60S with those on. So, you know, so you need to check your references. And then you've got this here, which is a, a, obviously a sort of winch for rescue winch. Now, I'm not sure if that should go on there either. Then we've got these exhaust parts here. These are going to go on the back. So, as I say, check your references, make sure you know what you're doing before you start cutting these bits out and, and fitting them on. Then we've got here, we've got some antenna going on, some lumps and bumps. And then we've got the um, mounting for the nose or radar thing there. We've got some PE bits and brackets and that, some more lumps and bumps and bits and pieces. And then we're going to build up the tail rotor. That there saying PE21, I think that's a plastic part, to be honest. I don't think it is a PE part. Uh, and then we've got the... Um, Tail planes there with the actual antenna on them. You've got the P ant antennas. You're going to leave them till last, obviously. Fitting that on, fitting that on. And then we're going to fit the, ru the rudder onto the back. Um, got some greeblies and bits and pieces on there. And then we've got vents and all this and that going on. Again, be very, very careful. Check your references. Make sure it is relevant to an MH60S. And then we've got this um, fair, this piece gone here. I'm not sure if that's a light or what it is. Again, check your references. Windscreen wipers, which is cool. Little um, PE antenna, which is nice. Little tiny antenna there for the centre. And then you've got all these bits and pieces now. You've got the option here of these three different um, electronic, I don't know if they're radar or early warning systems or what they are, um, but basically they're going to go on the on the nose. And then you've got these things here, whatever they are, they're up here, they're going to fit on the nose, they look correct. And then we've got this rotor head assembly. 
Um, now, if you watch Phil Forey's build or if you've got the SH60, the parts are identical, but the layout and assembly sequence is different. Um, the other thing you'll notice in Phil's build, one of these parts is either 33 or 34, was actually moulded backwards and he had to cut it about. It looks like Hitty Hawk have changed the tool, which is a first, I think. Um, then you've got the actual rest of the rotor head going together here, fitting the rotor head on. If you want to make these fold, have a look at Phil's build again and you'll see how they fold. And then you've also got in the kit, we've got the, sort of the stays and everything that go onto the back to support the blades. And then we're into our ammunition. So we've got some machine guns here. Uh, they look like 50 cals. And then we've got our ammunition boxes here. We've got a PE base, fit the gun onto there. And then you've got your ammunition belt, which is again made of PE, which is a really nice touch. And then we've got this great big gun here, which is gonna come out somewhere. Um, as I say, I say making two of them. So not sure exactly where they're gonna go. Here we are, they're going onto the side here. So we can see we've got these FOD guards on here, which I don't think should be on here. We've got these guns sticking out of the side, which I'm not sure they're correct either for the MH60S. Um, but you also notice that on the actual helicopter, we have this huge gun, okay? Um, hanging out of the side on this big pylon. There is absolutely no mention of it in the instructions whatsoever, but it is in the kit, I'm led to believe. So let's start looking at some plastic. So we've got our fuselage halves here, which are beautifully molded. You can see we've got some very, very nice crisp rivet detail in there. It's all gonna take a wash beautifully. Um, really, really nice crisp molding. As for accuracy, I do not know, and I'm not gonna look, uh, but, um, it just looks very, very nice. You see the detail on there is stunning. And then we've got a lot of holes in here which can be drilled out. And I'm not sure what they're for. I have been looking at photos to see where the actual um, rotor supports sit because they just go in the sides here. On Phil's model, he had uh, actual ports you could see on there where there was a door that opened where I went in. We don't have it on here. So whether that's inaccurate or not, or whether there should be something there, or whether they fit on these lines here, I don't know. But um, that's something we can look into. And then again, you've got this side as well. And you will notice that this one, the fuselage is in one piece. Is it a fuselage on a helicopter? I guess it is. Um, on the Seahawk variants, they have the option to fold the tail which would look stunning as a display, but the trouble is they've all got beautiful artwork on the tail, so if you fold it over, you're not really gonna see half of it, so, yeah. So, first sprue. This is sprue. This is sprue C. Um, these very, very faint markings, I would suggest coming in with a marker or put a flag of tape on there or something. So you can see we've got the cop top cover here, We've got the, this is the ordinary MH style. This is the army style rotor assembly there. Um, we've got our engine covers there. And uh, that's the exhaust there. And little bits and pieces in interior of the engine bays. This is the big fuel tank that goes in the back of the army ones. Um, so basically you're not gonna be using that. And then you've got this, that's a boom, tail boom for something I'm guessing. Uh, rotor head. And then we've got all parts, different parts of the road to head. And as I say, that's, none of this is going to be used. It's a far more complex system on this model. So we can see we've got some lovely, beautiful mold and there's no short shots that I can see. We've got no ejector pin marks in areas. We've also got these, a lot of these Z pins. These are basically ejector pins that have a slot in the side of them. So it leaves you a great big lump on there. And it actually, most folding machines are uh, vertical. So as they come out, the parts come out and those ejector pins will hold the sprue there. And then an operator or a robot can take the sprue away and then close up again. So that's what they're for. Going over here, this is sprue B. And again, this is gonna be from the old MH60 Blackhawk kit. And you're not gonna use the floor. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot on here you're not gonna use. So. Basically, you, as I say, you can have a complete floor in your spares bin. So, all very, very nice. Again, no massive ejector pin more other than these here. But uh, all in all, very nice. Got some beautiful, there's that bulkhead that isn't mentioned in the instructions. I'm assuming that's gonna be the one. And we've got some lovely raised detail on there. Very, very nice indeed. 
As I said, I'm sorry I'm not taking this out of the bag, guys, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be building this in uh, any time soon. They're very unusually unusual for Kitty Hawk. They've got two clear sprues, which are just put in the box. Now, normally, Kitty Hawk would put their clear sprues in a box and have them beautifully protected. But luckily, these aren't scratched. If you had a scratch on that windscreen, it would ruin the whole model for me. But luckily, there are no scratches. Um, and luckily, that one's there is not scratched, even though you can see the bag has been scratched. But... Uh, Again, very, very clear, beautiful parts. I mean, just look at the, how clear that is. Even looking at it through a plastic bag, you can see how nice it is. It's lovely. Beautifully done. Okay, so I'm going to put those carefully to one side and we'll, we'll wrap them up in some tissue. Okay, next sprue. <clears throat> this is a pair of sprues. We've got H and WA and WB. So lots and lots of sprues here. So it looks like that's our FOD guards. Um, there's your centre console, not sure if that's the one we're going to use. We've got some seats here and another instrument panel. So obviously lots and lots of different versions. This is the uh, radar bit for the nose that's going to be going on. So yeah, all very, very nice. Beautifully moulded. <clears throat> very nicely done indeed. Another sprue here. You can see we've got more engine covers and we've got more cowlings over the engines and more of these pieces of trim that go around the um, around the uh, rotor head. And then we've got a different rotor head assembly. Now, for some reason, I don't know why, Kitty Hawk have made this with two, two of the rotors are here and then two are separate. I don't know why they've done that. I don't know why they would have made them separate. If you know, let me know. Um... I'm looking on there, I'm hoping they're not ejector pin marks, they look like they should be on there. But this is where this is where Phil was saying about the problem. It looks like they've corrected the issue um, and they've made them the right way round. If you look at Phil's build, he's had to actually cut one off, cut this leg off of here, cut that leg off of there and swap them over. Now if you look in the instructions, this is through HD and it actually says on here you can see it, SH60F, okay, so it's actually, like I say, looking on helis.com, it said it's um, uh, an MH60 with a Seahawk rotor head. So if we look at sprue HD here, okay, we can see down in the bottom corner, there's those two parts, 33 and 34, okay, you can see they're both the same way round, but if you look on here, they've actually changed it. So it looks like Kitty Hawk have actually updated their mould, which is a really nice touch. So, um, yeah, cool. I, I hope they have. Well, they obviously have, because I've, I've looked at Phil's video time and time again, and that is different. So they have done it. And then here you've got the, let's get the instructions out of the way. Here you've got the, um, this is the supports, these frames. These are for the, uh, that one's bent now. These are for the support and the rotors if you want to have your rotors folded. And it does look very, very nice with the rotors folded. So. There's no mention of any instructions. Uh, there's no way on the on the fuselage for them to be fitted. So we've got more of these fairings here around the rotor head. Some tailplane parts. We've got some wheels. These are the side panels. Not sure if they're the ones we're actually going to use. Um, lots and lots of bits and pieces and greeblies. That's the mounting there for the um, for the winch. And then we've got some undercarriage legs here by the look of things. Uh, lots and lots and lots of little bits. And as I say, you're going to end up with lots and lots left over. Here we've got some more doors. And then we've got that great big pylon for hanging that great big machine gun off. And then more pylon parts here. Some fairings. Uh, more fairing parts there. That looks like fairings for the undercarriage. We've got a spray bar, whatever it is, on the top. And we've got another radar thing there. I call it the radar thing. What I'm referring to is this on the nose. So, here we go. We've got like a pitot tube looking thing there. But, uh, very, very nice indeed. You can see they've really gone to town. They've taken the effort. The doors are moulded with beautiful rivet detail around the frames. And then no ejector pin marks on the inside. Really nice. And here we go again. And we've got more of those fairing parts, we've got more doors, we've got another floor, we've got another ceiling. <laughs> seat mounts here, um, door internal detail, some more seat framework, uh, whatever that is, that looks like some kind of ducting for the interior. 
So uh, yeah, lovely, um, lovely crisp molding again. No ejector pin marks on the inside. Yes, there is. There's an ejector pin mark there, but you've got this interior frame going in, so it's going to cover that ejector pin mark up. So you can see what I'm talking about there. On the inside of that door, we have ejector pin marks there and there. But then that frame is going to glue in, and that ejector pin mark will be under there and under there. So nice touch. So that's the kind of thing Tamiya does. Right, here we go. So we've got East Spruce here. There's two of these all bagged together. So um, very, very nice. We've got that <coughs> uh, towed array thing there with the tail piece there. So you've got those in there. We've got some seats here. So I'm not sure we're going to have enough seats to do, as they said, we've got a torpedo type thing there, whatever that is. We've got a fuel tank there. And then we've got rotor blades. I'm not sure if these are the rotor blades we're going to use or if these are the rotor blades for the for the army version. This is the first time I've looked at this. And you've got an unusually floppy sprue there with the rotor blades just left to flop around. Um, so I'm not sure if these are the ones we're going to use. We've got some, ah, there's all the seats. There's a lot of seats for the inside. We've got our wheels and tires there. Seat bases there, so we have got enough gearboxes there. So this is saying MH60L. And this one is saying SH60F. So these are the rotor blades we're going to use. But these are the seats we're going to use. So it's basically a combination of the two. So again, I mean, if these rotor blades are nicer than the Academy ones, and the rotor head is nicer, stick it on your Academy kit. The windscreen wipers there, which are lovely. I'll show you those close up. Very, very nice indeed. Really, really nice kit. Um, very, very complex. It's definitely not a quick build. But it is a very, very nice looking build. So here we've got the um, got our sprues here with our some weapons and everything on there. We've got our engines and we've got some um, armament belts there. Very, very nice indeed. And I'm looking, I think I've got some missing parts. Um, I shall have to get onto e models. There we go, very, very nice indeed. And then we've got down here, I'm just looking in the instructions. Yeah, now the reason that gun isn't mentioned is because they've stopped giving you it. That used to be resin with a brass cooling jacket around the outside and a resin end piece. And if you look now in the contents, it's not included. That's why it's not mentioned in the instructions, because you don't get it. So this is where they get away with image on box may not depict the model. <laughs> so there we go. So we've got some photo etch here, which is uh, beautifully done. Very, very nice indeed. We've got some of the, the floor mounts there for the for the guns, for the 50 cals. And we've got some uh, belts there, ammo belts. Very, very nice indeed. And that's the grills for those FOD covers. And then these parts here fold over and they're part of your rotor head. But, uh, yeah. Very, very nice. I'm a little bit disappointed, I must be honest. I'm a bit disappointed that I haven't got the resin in here. Because I looked at a review on modeling news and it showed it with the resin parts for that gun and I haven't got it and I can't complain that this kit's incomplete because it doesn't say in the instructions it should have it now these decals are absolutely beautiful uh, they're Kitty Hawk's own so there shouldn't be any problem going down but if I give you a close-up look at these you can see they're absolutely gorgeous that goes underneath the tail on one of the versions of that face there's these beautiful bulldogs Very, very nice indeed. Beautiful. And then here we've got the general, um, it's, it's for the Nighthawk, it's not a generic decal set, but it's it's actually just your generic uh, rescue and instruments and bits and pieces and greeblies. Looks like we've also got some um, decals for our uh, weapons there as well. You've got all your stencil data there. Very nice. So yeah, very, very nice. As I say, a little disappointed I haven't got the resin parts for that massive machine gun that goes on the side. Um, but uh, hey-ho, maybe I should order another one and see if it comes in it. So there we go. So that's been a review of Kitty Hawk's beautiful MH60S Nighthawk KH50015. Go take a look on eBay, have a look at e-models or whatever. There's loads of variants of this cat out there and they're all beautiful. So but if you're after that gun, 
you might not want to order this one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.